So let's discuss radical reactions. So radical reactions are composed of three important steps. We have the initiation step, the propagation step, and the termination step. So in the initiation step, what we are producing are radical reactants. In other words, in order to have a radical reaction, we have to have some amount of radicals. And what the initiation step allows us to do is it allows us to produce our radical compounds. So what's a good source of radicals? Well, peroxides are a very good source of radicals because they have relatively weak oxygen-oxygen bonds. For example, if we look at the following peroxide, let's say these R groups are two identical R groups, we'll notice that there is an oxygen-oxygen sigma bond. And in fact, this is the relatively weak bond because it requires approximately 35 kilocals of energy to break one mole of this peroxide. So if we add some source of energy that's this amount or greater, we're going to break one mole of these bonds to form the following two molecules. So these two radicals are identical because these R groups are identical. Notice we have a single electron in the non-bonding orbital of the oxygen on each of these oxygens. So in the second step of our initiation step, what we have is one of these molecules, these radicals, reacts with some other compound, let's say HBr. And what happens is this sigma bond dissociates, breaks, forming the following oxygen H bond. And one of the electrons in the sigma bond dissociate and stays on this bromine and we get the following radical, neutral radical. Now this radical is the end product of our initiation reaction. This is known as a chain carrying radical. So once again, the initiation step produces a chain carrying radical and this radical plays a role in propagating our radical reaction. And now we jump directly to the propagation step. This is our second step in which this chain carrying radical plays a role in continuing or allowing our chain to grow. So let's look at the two steps of the propagation step. What we have is an alkene reacts with a bromine, the chain carrying molecule formed in an initiation step. One of the electrons in the pi bond breaks, breaks off and reacts with this electron forming the following sigma bond. And the second electron stays on this sp2 hybridized carbon. So that electron is found in an 2p orbital. In the second step of the propagation step, we have a second HBr molecule that adds to the product of this first step in the following manner. And we form the following a halogen containing hydrocarbon and another chain carrying radical. So we're essentially forming a chain carrying radical in the initiation step and we're reforming that same chain carrying radical in our second step of the propagation step. Now this reaction can continue until termination takes place. Termination is the final step, it's the annihilation of a chain carrying radical. In other words, what happens is this molecule, this radical, reacts with a second radical in an exothermic fashion to produce some molecule that's no longer a radical. And since we have no more radicals, we terminate our radical addition reaction. So let's look at the following examples. Now, if this bromine radical reacts with a second bromine radical in the following exothermic reaction, we get the following bromide or diatomic bromine. And now we no longer have any radicals, so our radical reaction is complete. In a second type of termination step, this same chain carrying radical can react with the product of this propagation step shown here in the same way in an exothermic fashion forming the following halogen containing hydrocarbon once again we no longer have any source 
or any of these chain carrying radicals left over and that means our radical addition reaction is terminated.